so that was a beautiful time of worship. And um, you can probably guess from the worship what I might be speaking about today. And from the psalm as well. I'm going to turn back to that psalm just for a sec. And read the last little part. It says, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So, as a congregation, we've been starting to look at the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Last week, Marty was here from Vancouver, and he was showing us how even in, in the First Testament, even before the New Covenant, um, many of the gifts had been experienced amongst the people. So this morning, I'm, I'm not actually looking at one of the gifts, but something that's essential to our walk as believers, and it's also a fruit of the Spirit. So the gifts come from the Holy Spirit, and the fruit come. And as a congregation, we've been, I think this is one of the things that is our strength, that we recognize that character is more important than the gifts. And the gifts are super awesome, and, and, and God uses them to build up the body and to, to show his wonders and, and all of that. But, um, but if you don't have the character, you can have all the gifts and then just drop off the cliff at some point. So what I want to look at today, we'll just turn to um, Galatians for a second, where the, the list of the gifts or the fruit of the Spirit is can read this quickly with you. And um, if anybody out there wants to get me a glass of water, a little dry in the throat would be super awesome. Appreciate it. So Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which is well known, but we'll read it. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So this morning, um, I'm going to be talking about joy. And joy is an amazing fruit of the Spirit. Um, it's something that really you need a lot of those other things to really experience true joy. I don't think you can really have joy if you don't have peace. And um, you can't have joy if, if you know, you don't have, um, let's see, what are, what are all of them? Peace, patience, love, goodness, gentleness, kindness, self-control. Yeah. There's a lot of things. If you don't have peace, you won't have joy, for sure. So I know that I need more joy. I'd like more joy. I don't know about you guys, but it's something that I would love to have more of. And um, I don't think it comes supernaturally to me. I know that I can, I can celebrate. Like joy is, is, like, joy is similar to celebrating, rejoicing. Um, I, was, I was thinking about, you know, what, what exactly is joy. I came up with some, some thoughts. Um, I think joy is a deep satisfaction and excitement for life that goes just beyond your circumstances or just it goes beyond just your circumstances to the depth of purpose and meaning. Tears sometimes come with joy. It is entwined with hope. That's what I was looking for back there when, when I was stumbling a bit. You can't really have joy if you don't have hope and peace, those things go together. Yeah, of course, they were getting to that. <laughs> yeah. I think joy can be the result of wonder, seeing the creation. Um, I think joy comes when you're feeling satisfied, when you're feeling fulfilled, when you know um, exactly who you are and you know that you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. I think joy comes with that feeling. 
Joy is similar to pleasure. It's related to passion. But the deepest joy is not gained through self-serving, selfish aspirations. The deepest joy seems to come from outside of yourself. Last week, Mike, Mike said something that I wanted to, to repeat. He said, joy comes from the ground up, not from circumstances, because circumstances are hard. So thank you, Mike. That is a word of truth and wisdom. Um, the dictionary defines joy this way. The emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. Delight, the expression or exhibition of such emotion. Gaiety, a state of happiness or felicity. Bliss. So, as somebody, as, as you well know, I'm sure, um, the true joy cannot be rooted in anything other than God. Because all of those things even mentioned in that dictionary definition, um, if they're just transitory, if they're just fleeting and disappearing eventually, it can never really produce that true joy within you. So the truest and greatest joy can never be fully realized without God as the central focus. We need intimate connection to him and to his purposes. First Chronicles 16.27 says, Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. And Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. So the Lord sings over us, and we receive and and one of the things that expresses our joy, just like this morning, is we sing back to the Lord. We praise him for who he is. And he is majestic. He is amazing. He's all in all, so it's God. God is necessary. We need to have intimacy with him to experience the truest form of joy. We need to understand his purposes. <clears throat> And as was said um, earlier as well, we sang a song about it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So there's a lot of things that are hard, you know, sickness and sorrow and shame we've experienced. We got to lay them down for the joy of the Lord. So I want to say that joy is our inheritance as a people of God. Because we are in Christ, and we inherit along with him. And Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy. And really, he is joy. I'm just reminded right now how Jesus always spent time with the little children had them come and sit with him, and I'm sure he played with them and, and um, just acted even like a child a bit around them because we're called to be like little children. And I think little children experience a lot of joy. <clears throat> I'm going to read from First Peter, and as I read this, um, be reminded of our study on Watchman Nee because it begins with what Messiah has already done. And so um, we learned with Watchman Nee that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And we have to learn how to be resting 
in that place. So 1 Peter, starting in verse um, 3, chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last times. In all of this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen. So Jesus is um, the source of true joy, and we rest in him, and as we rest in him, and what he has done, because he's won our salvation. He's delivered us. It says we're filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. It's inexpressible. And sometimes I think we have to, I think we're doing it this morning, you know, where you take a selah from all the stuff that's going on in life, all the things that are burdening us, and we just focus on Jesus. Yeah, we gotta carry Jesus into all those places too, but, but it's valuable to gather as a body and come and, and meditate and praise and worship in thanksgiving. That was another one that I was gonna say. You can't really have joy without thanksgiving. That's another one. So they work together. <clears throat> and read John 15, nine. Jesus said a couple things that are keys to joy that are worth, worth uh, hearing. He says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down their life for one's friend. And he says later, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So we rest in the Lord and we receive his spirit and through his word, empowering us, we go out and we walk. And part of our walk is to walk in joy. As we go out there, as we interact, as we face difficult circumstances, there's a joy within us that's a testimony to other people. Joy is found in serving other people, is what Jesus is saying there. Because all of those commandments are about 
Well, it's about honoring God, but it, a lot is about serving other people, and that's what Jesus did. Though he was the king, he became a servant, and he served his disciples, and he went to the cross for each of us. This is a quote from Watchman Nee. And as I mentioned, when we, when we um, talked about his life, that, that he was put in prison for the last 20 years of his life, and, and there he died. And yet his faith was amazing, and he did so much for the body of Christ. And this is a quote from him. Do you know, my friends, that the spirit within you is very God? Oh, that our eyes were open to see the greatness of God's gift. Oh, that we might realize the vastness of the resources secreted in our own hearts. I could shout with joy as I think, the spirit who dwells within me is no mere influence, but a living person. He is very God. The infinite God is within my heart. I am at a loss to convey to you the blessedness of this discovery that the Holy Spirit dwelling within my heart is a person. That's from his book, The Normal Christian Life. So I'm going to talk about some examples of joy in the Bible. Um, one last thing, though, that Jesus said was, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. So we should be a people that's asking of the Lord. There's the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. God, help, help each of us. God, help me to continue to grow in the fruit of the Spirit to seek you and pursue the gifts of the Spirit and to walk in them as Jesus did. So some of the beautiful examples of joy, I think, in the Bible are when barren women were able to conceive. And so we see that as examples in some of the, the incredible um, women of faith, such as Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel and you remember Hannah how she dedicated her her son to the Lord and also Elizabeth so Elizabeth and Sarah they gave birth in their old age too right so it was miraculous but you can imagine the joy of having gone through so much of your life and not being able to do something that was so central to who you wanted to be as a person, especially in that culture, in that day. Another um, place that I think was incredible joy was when people were healed, miraculously healed. They have, may have suffered for many, many years. They might ne never have seen. Then Jesus came along and they could see. Everything was darkness before, and now they could see. I think that would be incredible joy. And then there were some even who were resurrected, such as, I think it was the, the Shunammite woman's son in the Old Testament. She had been promised this son and blessed by the prophet. And then all of a sudden, her, one day when her son had been, was, you know, years older and working in the field, he falls down and, and become sick and then he dies and she goes to the prophet and the prophet comes and he, he puts himself onto the child and the life is breathed back into that child. Like imagine the joy of that mother turned from sorrow and grief into joy. Another example of I think where where people in the scriptures experienced great joy was when they were chosen for a, a noble purpose. 
such as Solomon being chosen to build the temple. Mary is a great example. She was chosen to bear the Messiah. And she has one of the most beautiful scriptures, which we call the Magnificat. And one of the lines is, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I think in all of these examples, um, you can see that the greatest joy is it's outside of ourselves. It includes us. We get to be part of it, but it's always bigger than just our own person, just, just the things that make us happy. It's, it's always about love being expressed to others and that you get to, to uh, bring things to life bring hope, bring, bring um, new beginnings, and you get to be part of them. I mean, it's all from God, but it's through us, and it's back to God. We get to be part of it. We get to experience it. In 3 John um, 1 to 4, he says, I have no greater joy than this. So this disciple who had walked with Jesus his whole life, um, and, you know, went through all of it, all of the, the highs and the lows of the journey with the Messiah until he was crucified. And then on the cross, what did Jesus say to John? He said, this is your mother. He pointed to Mary. And so he took care of Mary as his mother um, until she died. And remember at the at the Last Supper when, when he reclined on Jesus' breast, he was the closest one to his heart, right? And he said, he, he referred to himself, he wrote a gospel, he referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And of course, Jesus loves all his disciples and all of us, but he had that intimacy and such a profound, um, that was such a profound truth to him Jesus loved him. He was the disciple that Jesus loved. So he's going to say here, I have no greater joy than this. Of all those things, I have no greater joy than this, that my children are walking in the truth. And um, I, I feel that when I read that. Because I have children, and even if we don't have children in the natural, we have children that we've come into, they've come into our lives and we're burdened for their souls. We care about what happens to their futures. We want them to know Yeshua. We want them to walk in the truth and not to be deceived, not to be hurt. And so that gives us joy when we see that our children are flourishing. They're walking in the truth they have that peace that passes all understanding. God is with them. They receive the mercy of God. I mean, it's a journey. There's highs and lows, but that's what we want for our children. And John says, I have no greater joy than this. <clears throat> so just a little bit more here, and then what I'm going to do is um, I, I was, you know, writing down things as things came to me over the week um, to prepare for this. And I was on my YouTube, and there was a, a program that, that just came up, and I wasn't looking for it or anything like that. It was by a man named Graham Cook. And uh, he, he was doing... Uh, this little segment on joy, and I listened to it, and it was so beautiful, and I just wanted you to hear it. So I might not get through everything that I was going to say, but I think it's more important to, um, to hear from him because uh, it's, it's like an impartation. It's kind of like a blessing 
and it's very personal and intimate, and you can tell that it's born out of many years of walking faithfully with the Lord and experiencing his goodness and his presence. So I believe that he was led by the Holy Spirit to give that word and, and, um, and so we're going to put that on in a couple minutes. So I'm going to touch on a couple more points first, but key that up. Can you tell me how long I've been going so far? Anybody know? Has it, been, it hasn't been 20 minutes yet, has it? It has? 25 minutes. So, <laughs> so we're going to key up the video. There's more that I would say, and um, maybe, maybe we, I can give out notes or something later. But uh, let's watch this and, and just open up our hearts for this. I think it's, I think it's important to see this. So. <laughs> 